There's a reason that not many people find success in trading stocks. There's a ton of information out there on the subject, but a lot of it is misleading, contradicting, or just simply not meant for beginners. So it often leads people in the wrong direction and prevents them from achieving the types of results that they should be achieving. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the biggest mistakes you should look out for when you start trading stocks and how you can avoid them. So let's get into it. My name is Charlie and on this channel I make videos about building wealth and achieving financial freedom so that you can free up your time to focus on the things that you truly care about. Now all of the mistakes that I'm going to talk about in this video are mistakes that I've made myself so I know firsthand exactly how detrimental they can be. And I'm hoping that by sharing what I've learned I can help some of you avoid making these same mistakes. So the first and probably the biggest mistake that people make when it comes to trading stocks is simply using the wrong strategies. Because unfortunately when a lot of people start learning how to trade stocks, they'll first first come across people who are teaching risky strategies or strategies that take a lot of time to master, so they'll end up losing money and potentially getting scared away from the stock market altogether. In fact, I found that it's actually pretty hard to find people that are talking about lower risk strategies like covered call writing. Because trading stocks is not about getting rich quick, it's about learning how to make your money work for you so you can create a more passive source of income and build wealth over time. So you have to realize that in general, the higher the potential for quick gains using a certain strategy, the more risk you're going to have to take on. So despite what some people may try to tell you, there's really no way to get rich quick without taking on a significant amount of risk and potentially losing a lot of money in the process. And while you won't become a millionaire overnight selling covered calls, you can definitely grow your wealth much quicker than you probably ever thought possible. As long as you apply the strategy correctly, which of course I've talked about in previous videos, which I'll leave linked below. Now the next mistake is believing that in order to be a successful stock trader, you need to buy the right companies before they get big. So some people think that you need to pick the next Amazon or the next Apple in order to get rich in the stock market, but that's just simply not the case. Of course, there are people that have gotten rich investing in companies in their very early stages, but even more people have lost money investing in penny stocks or startups that didn't pan out. The large majority of people will make more money in the long term by buying shares of large already established companies or even just buying index funds and riding the growth up over time. Because as it stands right now, the stock market consists mainly of large funds and institutions that like to buy shares of those solid companies, which pushes those companies' stock prices higher. So as traders, we're really just looking to ride the growth that those institutional investors create. So personally, I like to start by looking at the 30 companies in the Dow Jones Industrial Average and trade as many of those as possible that meet my criteria. That way I'm trading well-established companies that tend to grow consistently over time and have a lot of institutional money pouring into them. Plus they're companies that I actually use and trust in my daily life. So as I've mentioned lots of times on this channel, the Dow components that I currently like are Apple, Microsoft, Nike, and Visa. And I also like Home Depot and Salesforce, although I'm not currently trading those ones. And just by trading a few of these solid companies, along with similarly solid companies in the S&P 500, you can make a lot of money in the long term without having to get lucky picking the right stocks. Now the next mistake that a lot of traders make is being hesitant to buy stocks when they're at all time highs and instead trying to buy them while they're down. Because if you're trading a fundamentally strong company that's consistently increasing its revenue and that you like for the long term, you should be happy that it's at an all time high because that just means that it's in a strong upward trend. There was actually a study done by LPL Research in 2015 which showed that if you had bought an S&P 500 index, at any all-time high since 1928, it would have reached another all-time high within the next month, 91% of the time, and within the next year, 99% of the time. So the reality is that it's very unlikely that you'll be buying at the absolute top, or even anywhere near the top for that matter. And this study is just one example, but you can find plenty of other studies along those same lines, which shows that it doesn't make sense to try to time the dips in the market. You're actually better off buying right now, regardless of the current stock price, as counterintuitive as that may seem. But again, this only really applies to well-established, fundamentally strong companies because there are definitely times where certain stocks shoot up due to hype or speculation without any real fundamental reasons to back it up. So if you just look at the chart of any fundamentally strong stock that's performed well over the last five to 10 years, you can see that it's actually at all-time highs very frequently. And you definitely wouldn't be upset if you had bought at an all-time high, say five years ago. So personally, I never buy stocks that are downward trending, but if that is part of your 
your strategy, just make sure to be very careful in doing so. It's easy to fall into a trap when you see a stock that's fallen in value a lot recently and saying to yourself, well, it has to rise again eventually. I'm just getting it at a discount right now. And that might work in some cases, but stocks definitely don't have to rise again. There's a big difference between solid companies that have fallen in value due to some temporary bad news and companies that have fallen in value simply because they're not good companies to own. The reality is that most of the time when stocks are falling, there's a reason that they're falling and it's not because they're good stocks that people want to own. Because again, as traders, we're trying to ride the trends that institutional investors create. And if they're pouring out of a stock, causing it to decrease in value, that's not a trend that we want to be a part of. And as we all know, you can never time the bottom of the market. So if you want to get stocks at a discount, it's better to buy them when they're rising off of their bottom as that institutional money is starting to pour back into them. Now, the next mistake that a lot of traders make is getting greedy and not sticking to a discipline. And this is probably the hardest part of trading because when the market is doing well and you're experiencing these incredible gains, it's easy to start buying more risky and volatile companies, using more margin, or buying a bunch of options to try to accelerate your returns. But as soon as your favorite stock drops in value or we hit a bear market that nobody ever sees coming, you're going to regret not sticking to a discipline. So I think it's always good to have a plan for your portfolio in terms of allocation, which you stick to no matter what, and you should also have a plan going into every trade that you stick to as well. So for me, I usually keep about 10 to 15% of my portfolio value in long term holds, 5 to 10% in leaps options, and then the rest in covered call stocks. And I do use a bit of margin, but I make sure to never use more than 40% of the margin that I have available to me. So your portfolio allocation is of course up to you, but just make sure you stick to it no matter what and don't get greedy. Then when it comes to individual trades, it's important to have a plan there as well. So whenever I'm trying to make a quick trade with the intention of buying and selling within about 60 days, I'll always go into it with an idea of when I'm going to sell. So typically I'll do this with leaps options, so I'll buy the option and plan to sell it when it's up anywhere from about 5 to 20%, depending on how bullish I am on that particular stock. But it is important to have that number in mind before you actually enter the trade. So hopefully this will help you to avoid some of the mistakes that I've made in the past. And if you haven't seen my last video where I cover everything you need to know in order to start selling covered calls successfully, be sure to click that video in the bottom right corner of the screen. I'll talk to you all in that next video.